Me first, Ginge. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. My work has made it clear that the dynamic between Harry and Harry's wife is that of intimate partner primary source, the victim, Harry, and his handler, the narcissist. Harry's wife's narcissism recognised that Harry was particularly susceptible to being controlled, and that he would provide massive amounts of fuel combined with access to character traits and residual benefits, the like of which Harry's wife had never been near, never mind actually touched, in the past. Accordingly, on recognising the value that he presented to her fuel matrix, her narcissism flicked the turbo boost button and caused her to go hell for leather to draw him in and ensnare him. Harry used to present as a confident individual. Yes, he could be a bit of a brat at times, but he was confident, engaging, he was well-mannered. He was able to go forth and deal with crowds, and he did so in an engaging way. And then he became a simp. This has been as a consequence of the way that his wife has treated him, relegating him to a position of being second. He is the prince by birth she has married in. He has had years of being involved in this particular constitutional establishment. She has not. And yet, who of the two of them is the most important? In her world, it is her. Everything must revolve around her. Everything must be about her. She must control him. She must lead, steer him, guide him, pick him up, put him down, in effect almost wipe his body. He is there to be used by her as just another appliance, albeit the most important one in her fuel matrix. Now I'm going to provide you, presently, with a piece of footage that not only enables you to see her narcissism in full effect, but it also demonstrates what the impact has been upon Harry. This is a man who was a prince and was used to being in the public eye. After all, he walked behind his mother's funeral cortege as a young boy. He has attended the openings of supermarkets and the cuttings of ribbons repeatedly. He joined the army, and he attended Sandhurst. And one of the things that when you are a cadet that attends Sandhurst on the way to becoming an officer in the British Army, you are given a copy of a book that is called Serve to Lead. It's the British Army's Manual of Leadership. And within the contents of this publication, it provides you with information distilled from years of experience of various leaders and officers telling you about morale, leadership, discipline, the British soldier, man management, duty and service, and courage. It is a handbook of various anecdotes and advices, ranging from individuals such as Wellington, Colonel Munson, Field Marshal Sir William Slim, Field Marshal Lord Wolsey, Philip Massinger, Sir John Fortescue, Shakespeare, Dr. Hare's Journal, Xenophon, Edward Fraser, and others, all providing you with the distillation of their knowledge, wisdom, and experience. An example goes thus. This is about leadership. I would define leadership as the will to dominate, together with the character which inspires confidence. A leader has got to learn to dominate the events which surround him. He must never allow these events to get the better of him. He must allow nothing to divert him from his aim. He must always be on top of his job and be prepared to accept responsibility. We must endeavour to produce on every level commanders with these qualities of leadership and character which inspire confidence in others. These qualities are probably possessed in some degree by all men chosen as leaders, but they need to be developed by training, and they must be so developed throughout the army. We must analyse the good and bad points 
in a man's makeup. We must then develop his good points and teach him to keep the bad points in subjection. Those are the words of Field Marshal the Viscount Montgomery of Alamein in military leadership, which was taken and utilised for the purposes of enabling officers to understand about the concept of leadership. Harry will have read that very thing that I've read to you there. I'm now going to show you a piece of footage. Whilst you're watching it, I want you to see what's going on, but I'm also going to repeat a section of what I've just read to you so that you can see the stark contrast between what should have been drilled into him and what he should have embraced and how that has played out now in his life. Here comes the footage. I would define leadership as the will to dominate, together with the character which inspires confidence. A leader has got to learn to dominate the events which surround him. He must never allow these events to get the better of him. He must allow nothing to divert him from his aim. He must always be on top of his job and be prepared to accept responsibility. With those words echoing in your mind, which are at a complete contrast to the man that you've seen in that short video, you've probably seen it before, but it bears analysis. Harry and Harry's wife are at some function. Harry, initially, is talking to those who are assembled. Harry is engaging with those individuals. And then, Harry's wife sees an opportunity to draw attention onto her. Remember... Her narcissism tells her that she's the most important person and instinctively directs her to try and take over the situation. Harry is the one that's holding court, but that's not good enough for Harry's wife. It means that he is receiving the responses of everybody else when they should be directed at her, and therefore this is wounding her. We haven't seen any instance of ignited fury. It's been kept well under check. The facade management is successfully doing its job, not even straining against the ignited fury on this occasion. But nevertheless, her narcissism directs her to intervene, to cause her to take over the scene. And consequently, she does so, basically telling Harry, I'm going to take over now. What she doesn't do is just stand by his side and cause the conversation to come across to her as she continues to talk, and perhaps involving Harry in what she's saying. Instead, rudely, and functioning with her sense of entitlement, she steps in front of Harry, shaking hands with the people. She now has her back to him. He has been pushed out of the picture, and instead she is the one that is continuing to engage with the people in front of her, shaking hands, saying hello, and there is Harry, lurking in the background, hands clasped together nervously, watching as his wife takes over the event. This, probably, is the piece of footage that demonstrates better than any other his relegation to the supporting role. Harry's wife will make noises about equality. However, she is more equal than others. Harry is relegated to this position of support act that he doesn't even merit being stood besides, that she completely takes over when he's speaking, which shows a lack of boundary recognition and a sense of entitlement, that she physically positions herself between Harry and the men, thus making herself the attention centre of attention, enabling the fuel to go to her, and to enable her to assert control, not only over Harry by, in effect, giving him a present silent treatment by giving him her back, but then also asserting control over those that are assembled. Harry's reaction shows a coward individual. He doesn't even show irritation at what she's done, or perhaps trying to move alongside her to keep the conversation going. 
It's almost like a whipped puppy that knows that he's been a naughty boy and has to stay away from Mistress because she's not very happy with him. It's me first, Ginge, because in her world she's the more important one, and the reaction of Harry demonstrates, even back then when this was first recorded, just how controlled, browbeaten and pussy-whipped he is. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for watching.